Undergate? Nubs? Gibberish? Sit around to find out. This is Budai Pop. Gundam Plastic Model Kits, or better known as Gunpla, has sold more than 500 million model kits around the world. Gunpla is probably one of, if not the most successful model kit lines in the world. But to understand how this mecha plastic model kit became a cultural phenomenon, we need to go way back, like way, way, way back to 1979. Super Robot Anime was at the height of its popularity in the 70s. The likes of Mazinga Z defining the genre where robots were sentient beings fighting off whatever monster that was attacking Japan that week, but instead were controlled by humans. Much like how they would operate heavy machinery, you know, like driving a car or something. This new subset became widely popular in Japan, and with the success, many, many, many similar shows began popping out on TV. The shows were so similar, in fact, that they kind of looked the same, from design to plot, especially the plot. Monsters Invade, Robot Kick Butt, Monsters Lose, Happy Ever After. Until the next episode, rinse and repeat. However, an ambitious new anime aired in Japan on the 7th of April 1979 where audiences were introduced to a more realistic and gritty take on the super robot anime trope. Gone were the monsters and aliens, replaced instead with stories of tragedy, its war and its devastating impact on those who fought in them and those who were caught in the middle thus creating a new sub-genre called real robot anime. That anime was Gundam. Created by Yoshiyuki Tomino, he wanted to tell stories of war and the harsh realities of it to his audience without having them experience it firsthand. Because, well, uh, war sucks. Fun fact! During pre production, one of the names that was tossed around for the series was Freedom Fighter Gunboy. But thank god they agreed with the name Gundam. Jeez. What is Gundam? Well, the team combined the English word of gun. Because, you know, war, with the word freedom, which became Gundam. But then Tomino-san changed it to Gundam because it sounds better. He said the mobile suits were like water dams, powerful enough to hold back enemies. Thus, Gundam was born. Unfortunately though, the show wasn't much of a success as they would hope for, and was almost cancelled after 39 episodes of the Planet 43. The remaining four episodes were eventually aired to give the series the proper closure it deserved. With the anime coming to an end and Gundam seemingly destined to fade into the pages of animation history, Bandai Japan swooped in and bought the rights to produce a toy line based on the series. But unlike conventional action robot toys back then, Bandai opted to produce them in the plastic model kit instead where you had to build the figures yourself using glue or cement. You even had to paint them if you wanted the kit to look exactly like the anime version, seeing as it came in, uh, only in one color. The first kit they produced and sold were the protagonist mobile suit Gundam or the RX-78-2, which came in two scales, the 1144 scale and the 1100 scale, with the former being sold for only 300 yen. That's, that's about 12, 12 ringgit. That's cheap. That is cheap. The kits were selling like ice cream on a hot summer day. People were clamming to see more, and Gundam finally saw a peak in interest from the public it so rightfully deserved. Since its first release back in 1980, Bandai has produced nearly 2,000 model kits based on various mobile suits from the numerous Gundam spin off series. I, I actually have not finished watching all of them. That's just, that's just too many. They have since improved on the model kit design, doing away with the cement and glue and replacing it with a snap built system unique to Bandai model kits. This made it even more accessible to anyone who wanted to try their hands on building their very own mobile suit. So there are five main model types in the Gunpla line. The first being the Super Deform, the 1144 scale high grade and wheel grade, 
the one 100 scale master grade and the creme de la creme of Gunpla, the 160th scale perfect grade. The grades are defined by the size of the kit as well as the level of complexity in the build. Most people starting out would pick up the high grade as the build is not complex, yet it manages to have quite a number of points for articulation. The HG line is also quite popular due to the plethora of mobile suit models to choose from, having the most out of all the grades. So after mastering the basic build of the high grade, one would then graduate to the master grade. The MGs are more detailed, boasting a fully articulated inner frame with details on the exterior armor along with decals and stickers, giving it a more real world look. So when you're ready to wear the big boy pants, you would then try to sink your teeth into the cream of the crop, the perfect grade. As the name implies, this kit is almost perfect in every way. Bigger, better, and gimmicks up the wazoo. Some even have building light features. The perfect grade is the most expensive general release kit you can get your hands on. Sugoi. A straight build out of the box can take you anywhere between a couple of hours to a couple of days, depending on the size and the grade of course. The end product looks very much like what's featured on the box and most Gundam fans are quite happy to collect them as it is. There are, however, those who have taken this hobby and made it into an art form. And as with any art form, evolution is inevitable. Skilled Gunpla builders all around the world have taken the hobby to a whole new level, customizing every inch of the model kit, scribing, panel lining, custom color blocking, decals, even adding additional parts to the, to the, to the armor and bazookas and, and guns and stuff. Like I said, work of art. With 2020 being Gunpla's 40th anniversary, Bandai has been dropping kit after kit of the Grand Lady RX-78-2 kicking off the celebration with the release of the industrial design G40 RX-78-2 B-roll please. This reimagined RX-78-2 was designed by famous industrial designer and longtime Gundam fan Ken Okiyama, giving it a very real-world look. The second granddaddy kit to drop was the high-grade RX-78-2 from the Gundam Origin manga. The last granddaddy to drop was the high-grade Gundam Beyond Global, exclusive for the 40th anniversary celebration. As I was writing this, Bandai did a surprise drop on their entire 1980s kit line, sporting the exact box art from their first release. These vintage kits are must-have for both Gundam and toy collectors alike. I managed to snag almost the entire collection, with a few missing here and there, due to it being a limited release here in Malaysia. And most importantly, this too. Ta-da! So it's the RX-78-2 and the Zaku-2 Shah as Nabal Red Comet. I'm actually quite happy I got my hands on this. This is part of history, man. Ooh. The only two stores that brought in the line was CK Tan Pla Model Shop in Bram Mall and Plamo Art Center in Kota Damansara. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check the stores out. So tune in to the next video where I'll share all the kits I managed to snag. 40 years and 2000 model kit designs later, Gunpla is at its peak and is showing no signs of slowing down. Now all I need Bandai to do is release the G40 industrial version Zaku 2 Red Comet and I am good. You, you know which one, right? Well, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed the content. And until the next video, my name is Arman, and this has been Budaya Park. <laughs>